Yo, what's up everybody? It is Thursday, December 1st. We had a little bit of a mixed market today. Dow was down, NASDAQ was up a little bit, and S&P was flat. Big news in the in the fiscal flow. It's kind of, I mean, I just, the whole thing to me, just kind of like looking at it with some perspective. And, you know, I've been telling you guys this, that it's ironic and it's also humorous because, you know, for months I was talking about the, the monetarist psychosis and the market went crazy down from you know, April until basically September, October, uh, we had during that period as I, you know, as we were going through it, I was explaining like we're having a very significant contraction in the fiscal support from last year. I mean, I mention it almost every video where, you know, two trillion taken away, gone, vanished into the black hole of the government's balance sheet, which basically is no place. Uh, but everybody was focused on monetary policy. That's totally, you know, because that's that's the, the, the mentality. I mean, that I've called it a sickness. Monetarism is a sickness. You know, and, and it's, I, I said that we will see that the rate hikes over time will be incredibly bullish because it will translate into really, really powerful um, interest income transfers into the economy. And you could also, in a larger sense, you could call that adding to the financial balances of the economy. And that was the other side of the whole rate thing. You see, like, when I, when I explain rates... And when I explain kind of, you know, even with inflation, these are price adjustments. You know, so you have, there's one element that, that loses, there's one element that wins, okay? In all of these situations, if we're talking about price adjustments, which is exactly what rates are, it's exactly what inflation is, it's exactly what deflation is, it's exactly what uh, exchange rate adjustments are, they're price adjustments. So... When you're talking about price adjustments, it's not like income is disappearing. It's not like uh, the net amount of financial assets disappear. You know, it gets redistributed. So what they didn't understand was like, you know, they, they have this view that the rate hikes are really, really negative. I mean, you still have people now talking about Next year, we're going to have a brutal recession. It was supposed to be this year, but now they're, they're calling it into next year because it's not happening this year. And actually, we see growth accelerating in the second half. It, it, it went positive in the third quarter. It's going to be positive in the fourth quarter. They don't see the other side. And so me, again, just like looking at this thing, it, it's humorous because they're kind of like, they're just puzzled. They don't understand what's going on. And it's going in the wrong direction. The market's going in the wrong direction. Economic activity is going in the wrong direction. They're still clinging to the monetarist view that, you know, the Fed will ultimately crash everything. And where the rate hikes are not causing that to happen right now, they're starting to talk about QT. And QT is another thing that I told you guys like way back. Watch what happens with QT. Because QT, again, it's just an asset swap. It's, 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 you know, there's no change in the quantity of financial assets in the economy. It's only the composition that changes. And actually, you could even argue there is a change in the quantity of financial assets because QT, when the Fed, you know, takes away the reserves and adds the, uh, the securities, the government securities, you know, those come with an interest rate and the, the interest rate now has been jacked up by the Fed. So the coupon on those securities, it's going to just keep going higher and higher. And I see this already in the numbers. Like we're only, 
We're only two months into the fiscal year, right? October, November. I mean, we're already talking about almost 45 billion of interest income has been added in two months. 45 billion. And it's, it's not even correct to say, okay, we're two months in out of 12 months, so you multiply that by six. So that's like, you know, um, what, 240, 250 billion? It's gonna be more than that. It's just ramping up. Like we're only first starting to see the interest on Treasury securities starting to add. I mean, the di things like the discount on T-bills and new issues, that's already up to 30 billion. Interest on Treasury securities, that's 12.2 billion in the last two months. And that's just first getting going. And I say this in, practically in every video that, you know, as these maturities, as these securities mature, and they're rolled over with new, you know, new two-year, new five-year, new 10-year, new 20-year, new 30-year, they're all going to come with the higher coupon, and it's going to be elevated for a long time. So, like, I'm sitting, and then I said also with regard to the QT, you know, the banks, when the Fed was doing all that QE, right, and everyone was like, printing money, they're printing money, and I kept saying, yo, you know, number one, it was just an asset swap, Again, number two, it was a bad asset swap for two reasons, because they were, the Fed was stripping out interest-bearing collateral securities and replacing it with non-interest-bearing reserves. And also, it was bad because the banks didn't even want those reserves. They couldn't even hold those reserves because as the Fed was piling trillions onto bank balance sheets they were bumping up against you know regulatory constraints that said you know they were going to be in breach of those regulatory limits to the point where the fed had to create a whole new vehicle that reverse repo facility just so the banks could shovel off all that excess, all those excess reserves into a separate facility to stay in compliance with the Fed. You know, I, I mean, I've been over this a million times. So when they're arguing now, the monetarists, because, you know, the rate hikes, they're not crushing the, the economy. And some of them are starting to like, what's going on? And, and you don't hear too much about you know, the rate hikes anymore. Now, yeah, you know, they're starting to say, well, they might slow down, they might slow down. But now they're talking about QT, how, well, that's going to be the thing. That's going to be the real bearish thing. Wait till next year when they're draining out all this liquidity. And again, first of all, the banks didn't even want those reserves, as I just said. They, they needed a place to shovel them off. All right? Um, and number two, the, the, uh, the QT, it's an asset swap. So they're taking one form of a dollar away, to the reserves, and they're giving, you know, a different form of the dollar, which is the, the collateral, the government assets that carry interest uh, payments. And you see now, you know, not only are the banks getting paid for the reserves they have, the, the Fed is paying interest on reserves, but now they're getting much needed collateral those treasury security anyway so you know i've been saying for a long time it's going to be fun to watch it's going to be fun to watch because nobody gets it they they just don't get it and they're all you know beside themselves about how this is going to be a disaster they're still look i just look today again in the uh weekly aaii sentiment that's the american association of individual investors bearish again 54 weeks straight we have not had a bullish reading 54 weeks straight i mean it's it's really incredible and the market has come up a lot from the lows in october 50 nothing we're still at very very high bearish levels and very very low bearish level and you get these guys on Wall Street who are like, you know, they're the very smart people. And then now they're like, wait till next year. There's going to be a major, major collapse and recession. Folks, the interest income being pumped in. The, the irony of this whole thing is that, you know, the Fed is pumping, not the, the Fed via these rate hikes are creating another massive fiscal expansion 
But the problem is, it's like just checks being sent out. This is not a fiscal expansion that leads to the creation of new real assets, okay? You're not building highways, you're not building bridges, you know, you're not building tunnels, you're not building hospitals, you're not building manufacturing plants. You know, things that would add to um, the supply of real assets that, that can create output and increase productivity. You're not upgrading the, the electric grid, you know? You're not uh, doing environmental cleanup or anything like that. You're not doing anything. You're just like sending out money. Sending out money. So this, you know, and I've been saying all along, like the Fed, and, and it's not just the Fed. This is the monetarist orthodoxy. This is what they believe. This is what they believe. And again, the, the, the examples are out there. I mean, Japan. I talked about this the other day, like negative rates, practically no inflation, yet they're a major, major, totally reliant on imported energy. Okay? According to the monetarists, according to the Fed, uh, their, their logic right now, Japan should have hyperinflation because they've had interest rates so low for so long and they've been doing quantitative easing in the, in the quadrillions of yen, not even trillions, in the quadrillions. And vice versa, you got Argentina where the rates are 75% and inflation now at 100% annually. And they keep raising the rate and um, the inflation keeps going up. So somebody asked me a question and, and I thought it was a good question. It was a fair question. They said, Mike, uh, because I was talking about de-dollarization the other day, you know, and that may, that may or may not be happening. It looks like it is happening and... The reason why, I think it should be pretty obvious that, you know, in the global dollar-based financial system, which is what it is right now in the world, which the United States is in control of, when they start erecting sanctions and creating impediments or blocking entire nations and, and enterprises out of that system, when they lock countries out where they can no longer access that system like hang on like taking russia off of swift and iran and all these other countries um and and there's uh secondary effects to that it's not just these countries that you may not like it's also it, it affects countries like china it affects countries like india you know legit affects countries like uh germany okay when the United States erects these kind of barriers uh, to the use of the system, now all these countries still want to use the dollar system, but they can't. So they have no other choice but to seek alternatives. Now this doesn't necessarily mean the dollar is going to go down, okay? Um, but they might want, they might decide to reduce their holdings of dollars and diversify into other assets, okay? Like uh, change the mix of assets that they hold. The only way to do this, okay, because you don't get rid of your dollars, like if country A sells their good dollars to country B, okay? If China sells its dollars to Brazil, well, the dollars are still there in the global system. It's just been a change of ownership. It goes from, you know, China to Brazil, maybe there's some short-term exchange rate fluctuation based on that sale or that purchase, whatever. But the dollars are still there in total. The only way the world in the aggregate can reduce its dollar holdings is they have to exchange those dollars for goods and services made in the, in the U.S. In other words, they say to the U.S., here, take back our dollars. So the dollars go basically like back into the U.S. domestic economy, really back to the Fed. They get canceled out uh, or they go, they go on uh, the account of uh, a domestic financial institution, okay? And then um, country A or China, whoever did that, they, they get the goods in return. Let's say they get oil, all right, which is what's happening right now. Another way it could happen is like this. China says, okay, well, you know what? Or some other country, you know, uh, like uh, Germany or, or uh, somebody else says, you know what, 
we're going to set up shop in the United States. We're going to open, uh, a, you know, uh, Volkswagen's going to open up a plant in Tennessee. So we're going to invest, we're going to take our dollars. Well, China says that we're going to open up some kind of factory here in the United States, or we're going to buy a refinery or something like that. We'll take our dollars, we're going to put it back in the United States, and we're going to, you know, invest it into a uh, manufacturing plant, a refinery, whatever. Okay, that's another way it could happen. What happens over time, and this is going to take, a, if this is happening, and I, I think it is happening because, you know, the United States has caused it to happen. And I always said, like, if the dollar one day loses its reserve currency status, it's not going to be because, you know, they're printing money, they're printing money. I mean, that's like, that, that was irrelevant. Um, it's going to be exactly because of what's happening right now, that the, the United States, through its own policies, made it, like, really, really hard to, you know, conduct commerce in dollars, erecting sanctions, locking people out of the system, that kind of, and that's what's happening. And again, the world doesn't want to give up the dollar. They, they're, everybody's very happy using the dollar, but, you know, we've created this situation now where countries are saying, you know, there's risk in holding dollars. We need to diversify. So what's happening is that these dollars are moving back to the United States in exchange for something. It could be petroleum. We see record, okay. Uh, yesterday we saw on the EIA data, Record exports of crude and petroleum, 11.8 million barrels in the week ending November 25th. Net exports, that means exports minus imports, record 3.9 million barrels of crude and petroleum products, refined products. So we see that's happening, but it's a slow creeping process because it's, it's like, it takes time. And you know, you got to look at why is the dollar going up? Is it going up because of some policy that, you know, the U.S. is, let's say, I don't know, an exchange, a, a specifically targeted, targeted exchange rate policy? No, it's happening for a different reason. I think, I think it's happening because this de-dollarization, which requires the rest of the world to bring it to give its dollars to the U.S. in exchange for something, it's slowly shrinking the U.S. trade deficit. Now, it's got a long way to go, and the U.S. is still a major, major um, deficit spender. Okay, so we got fiscal deficits, which, which pump dollars out there into the global economy. So it's like, I mean, it's going to be a slow slow process. So somebody asked me, don't, Mike, don't you think that's going to be negative for the economy? Again, what we're dealing with here, when you're talking about exchange rates, is a price adjustment. And it's just like any other price adjustment, like interest rate adjustment, like inflation, like deflation. Um, you know, there's going to be one cohort that wins and one cohort that loses. Okay, every, you know, industries that benefited in the United States from a, a weak dollar, if you want to call it weak, I don't, you know, um, they might, you know, they might not fare as well when the dollar goes up. Industries that got hurt by a weak dollar or got hurt by us offshoring, uh, you know, moving investment or investment flowing out into the foreign sector, like the industrial base, the industrial economy, they might benefit from capital investment coming into the United States. So it's not a question of like, you know, is this bad for the economy or bad for the market? It's a question, it's always a question when you're talking about price changes, regardless of the form of the price change, regardless of, you know, the shape of it. In other words, is it inflation? Is it deflation? Is it a rate increase? Is it a rate decrease? Is it an exchange rate adjustment? These are all price adjustments. The, like the thing you got to ask yourself is like, 
what sector benefits and what's there's always going to be a winner and there's always going to be a loser and it's not hard to figure that out if you figure that out like you are so far ahead of the game like all these people running around for the last you know year uh, freaking out about it about rate hikes like if you just understood that that is just a redistribution of income and you positioned yourself, you know, why were rates going up? Well, because the Fed saw inflation go up. Why was inflation going up? It was mainly because food and energy prices, and that was mainly because of, you know, supply shortages, the sanctions. So you position yourself in those areas, you would have made out like crazy. Okay? When she, these are just price adjustments. Um, and in the big macro picture, what I try to explain to you guys all the time is just stay focused on that swimming pool. Is it, is it getting filled up or is it getting drained? And basically, in the United States where, you know, we run fiscal deficits all the time, big ones, it's, it's just always, there's always water flowing into the pool. You know, sometimes it flows fast. Sometimes it flows less fast and then you have maybe some, you know, a little pullback or a correction in the market, maybe a slowdown in the economy, maybe even like, you know, what we saw in the first half of this year where, where the contraction was historic. You know, we never saw a drop in fiscal that big, but you knew it had to stabilize. It always stabilizes because of one very simple thing. We have automatic stabilizers, things like Social Security, things like unemployment benefits, things like, you know, uh, uh, disability and, and all these other things. The economy, if it goes down to a certain level, all these things start kicking in. That's why they're called automatic stabilizers. So you always have to keep that in mind. So, you know, really it's all about what rate is that swimming pool filling up? It's always filling up. There's going to be times when it gets drained out a little bit. You know, we just went through a time when it got drained out a lot, but then it started filling up again. And it's just like, you, if you understand that, I mean, it's so basic and so simple. And then you have all the rest of these people out there, like micro focused on these things that they don't really matter and they, they absolutely, these people don't understand, okay? They have a total, total misreading of these things. And I don't know, maybe the dollars start going back down again. I mean, I, I just think like over time, because of the sanctions and what the U.S. has done to, block, to create risk, in the simplest way I could say it is that what the U.S. has done through its policy you know, the weaponization, we can call it, of the dollar. Uh, it creates risk to hold dollars. Uh, and so over time, there's going to be a desire to diversify away from the dollar. It's going to take a very long time. They don't want to do it. Number one, they don't want to do it. But they know they have to do it, at least to some extent. And number two, because the U.S. is a, a deficit, the, the government deficit spends, it's always pumping dollars out into the global economy. It's always pumping dollars out into the global economy. So the question is, you know, will the, the return of those dollars start to exceed the rate at which it's being pumped out? And that's, you know, we're a long way from that happening. But, you know, you're starting to see, like, movement in that direction. It's the simplest way... You know the old saying, keep it simple, stupid, That's this is it. I mean, is the swimming pool moving up? And are we, to, when policy is enacted, you know, are we talking about a price change or are we talking about, you know, more water go, or less water going into the pool? If it's a price change, just make your adjustment. You know who's going to benefit and you know who's not going to benefit. It's not that hard. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. See you tomorrow. Bye.